today we traveled back to the United States coming from Ireland and St. Patty's today has been canceled. All the restaurants and pubs are closed. All the sightseeing attractions are closed. Like even walking around last night in Dublin, like everything was dead. There's no one around. Everyone is in their homes. It's insane how serious the situation has gotten since like I came here on Wednesday. I remember on Tuesday afternoon, I went to Target, got toilet paper, got, you know, toiletries for the trip. I think it really didn't hit us until yesterday when we came to Dublin and we walked around and the streets that are usually packed with people going into pubs and bars and just walking around and sightseeing, like they were completely empty. Like we were the only people there. My flight is at 11.30. We are flying through Boston and then to Philadelphia. Uh, we actually moved up the flights just because of the travel ban and everything that's been happening. The tour group I'm with like rescheduled our flights and now we're going back home. I'll keep you updated on like how the experience is, checking in, what precautions are taken, uh, are we screened? I am really interested to see like how this process is gonna work. If you're a software developer, you probably love efficiency. And so we're gonna see how efficient this airport screening security thing, and even if we're screened at all. Of course, before we went to the airport, we had to have some food. This is a traditional Irish breakfast that we had at our hostel. We stayed at the generator, and you could also order off the menu if you wanted to. Then our tour guide ordered us a taxi from where we were staying and we drove to the airport. It was about 20 minutes away. When we got to the airport, we were given this traveler health declaration form. And on this, we had to fill out what countries we've been to in the past 14 days, if we were feeling any symptoms, where we were staying, who we had contact with, that sort of thing. After the airport employee asked us where we had been, we had only been to Ireland, he gave us these pink stickers that we were supposed to put on our jacket. Mine fell off almost immediately, but that's that. There were also these COVID-19 forms everywhere, basically saying, be careful with what you touch and how to stay safe during this pandemic. The airport check-in was pretty much empty. No one was around as we went up the escalators and walked through security. Not a lot of people, we probably waited 10 minutes for security, not a lot going on. Still, those COVID-19 forms were everywhere. From there, we continued on through the airport, going to our gate. Dublin actually has pre-clearance, and so you do all of your customs before you get on the flight, and then when you land, you just go straight out the airport. Going down the elevator, we started to see the line and this is where the line for customs really started to build out. At this point, what you're waiting for is an extra layer of security that you would usually get after you've landed in the United States. And so here you're basically putting your bag on a conveyor belt and they do the security process again. In this line, we probably waited an hour or so and around halfway through the line, this airport employee was passing out water bottles. This was super nice because the line was really long. After the second portion of security, another employee was standing there and separating us based on what countries we'd been to in the last 14 days. There was one line if you had been to China, Iran, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, any of these countries that were uh, very affected, you went to one line and if you'd only been to Ireland or been to non-affected countries, you went to the other line. We were only in Ireland, so we went to the Ireland line and it was very fast moving. We got through it very quickly. We went through the passport control. The passport control person like didn't know what my form was and no one ever collected the travel form. So I don't know who was supposed to collect that, but it never got collected, so I don't know. But if you had been to one of those other countries and were put in the other line, like guaranteed you're missing your flight. That line was not moving at all. I asked a guy about halfway through the line how long he's been there waiting, and he said four and a half hours, and he was only halfway through this line. Citizenship did not matter. There were US citizens in the line, I could tell from the passports, but people were sleeping, people were on the ground watching Netflix, like no one was standing, everyone looked super tired. Uh, so even though US citizens under the travel ban are allowed to come back from Ireland, I don't know what the situation would have been if you were in that line and missed your flight. You know, how long are you standing there for days? Like, what's that situation? You know, what happens when there's only so many flights coming out of Dublin a day to the United States? After we got through passport control, I got a blueberry muffin and some snacks and our flight was a little bit delayed. And so we waited around for probably two hours and then finally got to board our flight. 
once we were on the flight, the first half of the plane was pretty full, and then towards the back of the plane, it got fairly empty. Once we landed in Boston, we exited through the baggage claim and got our bags that we had checked and rechecked them with JetBlue. Unfortunately, we missed our connection, and so we had to rebook and get on a later flight, but no one was around in this particular area. In fact, the JetBlue employees were only allowed to stand behind the concession, I guess, or the help desk, or by where you drop your bags. They weren't allowed to walk around where the check-in places were. Then we got on that connection flight to Philly, and it was very, very empty. It was probably 10% full. No one was on this flight, but we were happy to be heading home. Ireland was super fun, and I hope we come back next year for St. Patty's Day.